ഓം ശ്രീ സായിറാം ജ്ഞാനവാഹിനി സ്ട്രീം ഓഫ് സ്പിരിച്വൽ വിസ്ഡം റിമൂവ് ഇഗ്നോറൻസ് ബൈ ഇൻസിസീവ് ഇൻക്വയറി ജസ്റ്റ് ആസ് തിക്ക് ഫോഗ് ഇസ് ഡിസ്പെൽഡ് ബൈ ദ റേസ് ഓഫ് ദ സൺ ഇഗ്നോറൻസ് മെൽസ് അവേ ബിഫോർ ദ പവർഫുൾ റേസ് ഓഫ് നോളേജ് Sanskrit saying knowledge is acquired by uninterrupted inquiry one should constantly be engaged in the inquiry of the nature of brahman the reality of the i the transformation that occur to the individual at birth and at death and other such matters just as you remove the husk that covers the rice so to you have to remove the ignorance that adheres to the mind by frequent application of incisive atmic inquiry it is only when full knowledge is won that one can get liberated or in other words attain moksha after attaining the above mentioned atmic knowledge one has to follow the path of brahman and act according to the new wisdom all doubts that afflict the mind have to be solved by consulting those who know or the true teachers one has the chance to meet until one gets firmly fixed in the path that the spiritual teacher guru or sacred text shastra has shown one has to steady fastly obey their rules and directions one has to be in their company or be associated with them in one way or other because one can progress very fast if one keeps close to a wise person who has realized the truth one must with unrestricted renunciation and sincere earnestness follow the instructions of the teacher and of the holy scriptures this is the real penance tapas this spiritual exercise leads on to the highest stage cognize the shining inner atma as oneself when ignorance and its concomitant delusion disappear the atma in everyone shine in its own splendor all that we see is as a mirage the superimposition of something over the real and the mistaking of that for this things have a beginning and an end they evolve and involve there is evolution as well as involution when all is subsumed by involution dissolution of the world pralaya only the casual substance mula prakriti endures only the unmanifested cause survives the universal dissolution when gold is melted in the crucible it shines with a strange yellow glory where did that light emanate from from the gold or the fire what happened was only the removal of the dross by the fire the effulgence belonged to the gold itself it is its very nature the fire is only an instrument for the removal of the dross nothing has been added to the gold by the fire in the crucible if fire could give the splendor then why does not a stick or blade or pebble placed in the fire becomes as shining as gold one has to conclude that the splendor come not through the fire but out of its own inner nature the inner presiding atma pratyagatma
the inner presiding atma pratyagatma is separate from the five sheaths of the individual the pancha koshas it shines with its own splendor it is a witness of the activities and consequences of three qualities gunas it is immobile it is holy and pure it is eternal it is indivisible it is self manifested it is peace it has no end it is wisdom itself such an atma has to be cognized as one self to realize the atma overcome four obstacles to realize this atma this embodiment of spiritual wisdom jnana swarupa four obstacles have to be overcome sleep laya waywardness vikshepa inertia chaya and the enjoyment of bliss rasa aswadhana let us analyze them one by one sleep laya when the mind withdraws from the external world it enters into deep sleep sushipti because of the overpowering influence of the objective world samsara the spiritual aspirant should arrest this tendency and attempt to fix the mind on the inquiry into the nature of the true self atma vichara the aspirant must keep watch over the mind in order to keep awake and must discover the circumstances that induce the drowsiness and remove them in time the aspirant must start the process of meditation dhyana again and again of course the usual producer of drowsiness and sleep during the meditation is indigestion overfeeding exhaustion through too much moving about want of sufficient sleep at night these also cause sleepiness and drowsiness so on those days when you wake up after a sleepless night it is advisable to sleep a little at noon although generally all those who engage in meditation should avoid sleep during the day time don't eat until you feel proper hunger practice the art of moderate eating when you feel three fourths full stop eating that is to say stop even when you feel you can take a little more in this way the stomach can be educated to behave properly over exercise is also not good even walking can be overdone you can walk until you conquer drowsiness but remember that you cannot plunge into meditation immediately after you have warded off sleep waywardness vikshepa the mind seeks to run after an external objects so constant effort is needed to turn it inward away from the attractions of sensory impressions this has to be done through the rigorous exercise of the intellect of inquiry discriminate and get the conviction driven into you that these sensory impressions are evanescent temporary transformable liable to decay and therefore unreal mithya and not truth satya convince yourself that what is sought after as pleasurable and avoided as painful are only the fleeting products of sensory contacts train yourself in this way to avoid the distractions of the external world and dive deep into meditation a sparrow pursued by a hawk flies in despair for shelter into a house but it is anxious to fly again into the outer world right so also the mind is anxious to go again into the outer world from the atma where it takes refuge waywardness is this mental attitude this urge to run back into the world from one shelter only the removal of waywardness will help the concentration of the mind in meditation dhyana inertia chaya the mind is drawn with immense force by all the unconscious and subconscious impulses and instincts of passion and attachment toward 
the external world and its multitudinous attractions. Therefore, it experiences untold misery and might even get lost in its depths. This stage is called decline of faculties due to inertia. The state of inertia into which one is driven by despair cannot be called perfect equanimity samadhi. One might even indulge in dehydreaming in order to escape from present misery or start building casuals in the air. All this is due to attachment to the temptations of the outer world. There is another type of attachment, the attachment to the inner world, the planning within oneself of various schemes to better oneself in the future as compared to the past. Both these form part of what is called decline shaya. The basis for both is the attach, attraction of the outer world. Attachment brings out about desire and desire leads to planning. Enjoyment of bliss, rasa aswadhana. When inertia and waywardness are overcome, one attains the bliss of the highest subject, object contact. Sa vikalpa ananda. This stage is called the enjoyment of bliss. Even this is not the supreme bliss, which one does not attain or acquire, but simply becomes aware of, so to say, the sweetness rasa of the differentiating superconscious state is a temptation that one has to avoid, for it is only second best. It is enough joy to act as a handicap. The joy is as great as that of people who just deposited a huge load they had carried for a long time, or that of greedy pers- people who just killed a serpent guarding a vast treasure they wanted to grab. Is the mind content with merely killing the serpent guarding the treasure? No, this is only the preliminary step of overcoming waywardness. True bliss is not experienced until the treasure is actually possessed. Likewise, one must not stop with mere subject-object type of superconscious state, savikalpa samadhi. From such a limited state, one must reach the highest superconscious state, nirvikalpa samadhi, where there is no mind or any ideation. Eliminate egotism and desire and gain liberation by conquest of the mind. When the sun rises, darkness as well as the troubles arising from it disappear. Similarly, for those who have realized the Atma, there is no more bondage and no more sorrow that arises from bondage. Delusion comes only to those who forget their bearings and egotism is the greatest factor in making people forget their very basic truth. Once egotism enters people, they slip from the ideal and precipitate themselves from the top of the stairs in quick falls from step to step and down to the very bottom floor. Egotism breeds satchism, hatreds and attachments. Through attachments and affection and even envy and hatred, one plunges into activity and gets immersed in the world. This leads to embodiment in the physical frame and further egotism. In order to become free from the twin pulse of pleasure and pain, one must rid oneself of the body consciousness and keep clear of self-centered actions. This again involves the absence of attachment and hatred. Desire is enemy number one of liberation, moksha. Desire binds one to the wheel of birth and death. It brings about endless worry and tribulations. Through inquiry on these lines, knowledge is rendered clearer and brighter and liberation is achieved. Moksha is only another word for independence, for not depending on any outside thing or person. If nicely controlled and trained, the mind can lead one to moksha. It must be saturated with the thought of God. 
that will help the inquiry into the nature of reality the consciousness of the ego itself will fade away when the mind is free from pulls and when it is rendered pure not to be affected in any way by the world that is a path to self realization self realization cannot be obtained in heaven swarga or on mount kailasa the flame of desire cannot be put without without the conquest of the mind the mind cannot be overcome without stamping out the flames of desire the mind is the seed desire the tree only knowledge of self realization atma jnana can uproot the tree so these three are interdependent mind desire and knowledge of atma brahman is pursued when all traces of intention despair the one who is liberated while alive the jivan mukta is established firmly in the knowledge of the atma that one achieved it by dwelling on the false true nature mithya of the world and contemplating its failings and faults by this means that one developed insight into the nature of pleasure and pain and an equanimity in both that one knows that wealth worldly joy and pleasure are all worthless and even poisonous that one takes praise blame and even blows with a calm assurance and is unaffected by both honor and dishonor of course those who are liberated while alive reached that stage only after long years of systematic discipline and unflagging zeal when distress and doubt assailed them defeat only made them more rigorous in self examination and more earnest about following the prescribed discipline they have no trace of the will to live they are ever ready to drop into the lap of death jai sai ram